ever find yourself like down in the trenches with your virtual machines, trying to get that extra little bit of boomph and wondering what's the secret sauce? What's making this virtualization platform really hum? Especially when you're comparing something like Proxmox VE to say a plain Debian setup. Oh yeah. Well, that's exactly what we're diving into today. The nitty gritty kernel level differences between those two. You can feel like you're, you know, wandering into a maze when you start digging into this stuff. Acronyms everywhere, the fear of a kernel panic lurking around the corner. Right, one wrong step and boom, blue scream. But for those of us who really want to push our systems to get that top tier performance, understanding these differences is kind of key. Absolutely. I mean, when you first encounter Proxmox, you see it's built on Debian, right? Mm. Super solid Linux distro. Rock solid. So the question pops up, mm. why not just stick with the regular Debian kernel? What's the special ingredient Proxmox is adding to the mix? Yeah, why bother with anything custom? That's the question we're gonna unpack today. What makes Proxmox's kernel stand out from a vanilla Debian setup? And trust me, it goes way beyond just a version bump. Way beyond. Proxmox has put a lot of work into crafting a kernel that's tailored for high performance virtualization. It's not just taking the Debian kernel and slapping a sticker on it. They've got unique tweaks, patches, specific modules designed to handle those demanding workloads. So let's start at the very beginning. What are we even talking about when we say kernel? Okay, so the kernel is basically the heart of your operating system. It's the core, the part that talks directly to your hardware, manages your resources, makes sure everything's playing nice. Like the conductor of an orchestra. Yeah, a very, very complex orchestra. And in the case of Proxmox, they're not using the standard Debian kernel. Our research shows they've got a custom compiled one. And get this. They base it on the Ubuntu kernel tree, not directly from Debian. Interesting. Why the switch? Well, both Debian and Ubuntu are top-notch Linux distributions, but their philosophies on kernel updates and hardware support are kind of different. Debian, especially the stable branch, it's all about reliability, long-term stability, even if it means sticking with a slightly older kernel. The slow and steady wins the race approach. Exactly. Ubuntu, they lean more towards having the newest kernels right off the bat. Better support for the latest hardware out there. Makes sense for Proxmox then. If you're setting up a virtualization platform, you're probably using pretty new gear. Newer CPUs, storage controllers, the works. Exactly. So basing their kernel on Ubuntu's means Proxmox users get those up-to-date drivers and performance optimizations from the get-go. It's like having a brand new car, you know, all the latest bells and whistles. Like having that lane assist and backup camera, stuff you wouldn't find in an older model. So they're starting with a more modern foundation. But then on top of that, Proxmox layers on its own specialized patches and modules. That's where things get really interesting. Yeah, that's their secret sauce. The things that make Proxmox's kernel really sing for virtualization. All right, let's break down some of those specific enhancements then. One that jumps out is the built-in ZFS support. For those who aren't storage nerds like us, what's the big deal about ZFS? Why is it so important in this context? Oh, ZFS is a big one. Think of it as a like a supercharged way to manage your storage. It's not just a file system, it's a volume manager too. Yeah. All rolled into one. Powerful. Super powerful. Especially for virtualization. It's got this laser focus on data integrity. Like it's constantly checking for and can even repair data corruption. No more silent data corruption. That's huge. Huge. And then you've got built-in snapshots, incredibly handy for backups, super easy to revert to previous states if something goes wrong, plus dynamic striping, which helps optimize performance across multiple disks. And the key thing here is that Proxmox bundles the ZFS kernel module right in the installation, Riley. Mm. No need to go through the hassle of manually building and installing it. Our source even mentions that Proxmox was using ZFS way before Ubuntu had default support for it. Yeah, they, they were early adopters, really saw the potential of ZFS, especially for those heavy-duty storage workloads you often see in virtualization. Like, if you've got a bunch of virtual machines running, especially if it's a home lab or business setting, CDS just makes managing those virtual machine disks so much smoother. And that data redundancy, it's something you just don't get with traditional file systems. Okay, so ZFS, definitely a big win for Proxmox users. Another tweak mentioned is the ACS override patch. This one sounds a bit more technical. Care to break it down? Sure. So this is all about something called PCIe pass-through. Basically, it's the ability to take a physical piece of hardware, like a fancy graphics card or a high-speed network card, and give a virtual machine exclusive access to it. Like dedicating a whole lane on the highway just for that one car, no traffic jams. Exactly. Direct access, no virtualization layer in between, can lead to some serious performance gains. But here's the thing. On certain systems, 
the chipset, kind of like the motherboard's traffic controller, it groups these PCIe devices together. Makes it impossible to pass through individual components. Like they're stuck in a carpool lane, even if they'd be faster on their own. That's a great analogy. And that's where the ACS override patch comes in. It bypasses those groupings, mm -hmm. unlocks the ability to pass through individual pieces of hardware. So what you're saying is Proxmox is giving you the power to really unleash the potential of your hardware, dedicating those powerful GPUs to specific VMs, opening up possibilities you wouldn't have otherwise. You got it. Think about it. You want a super smooth gaming VM. Dedicate a high-end graphics card to it. Need a VM for machine learning that can really crunch those numbers. Direct access to a powerful GPU. The ACS override patch makes that stuff work. It turns what would be a frustrating almost their situation into something that works flawlessly. It's a game changer, especially for those hardware accelerated tasks within VMs. Okay, now let's move on to something that's not as flashy, but just as crucial, system reliability. Our source mentions Intel MyDT and hardware watchdog support. Ah, the watchdog, always keeping an eye on things. So what exactly is this watchdog timer and why should someone running VMs care about it? Think of it as a safety net for your server, like a little guardian angel. It's a system level component, and you find them a lot in enterprise hardware, that basically monitors how responsive the system is. If your server goes unresponsive, say it crashes or gets stuck in a loop, the watchdog timer triggers an automatic reboot. So like an automatic reset button, if things freeze up, it hits the button and tries to get things going again. Exactly. For those mission critical setups where uptime is king, this is huge. It's all about building in that resilience right at the core. Mm -hmm. Even if there's a major system hiccup, the watchdog tries to bring things back online. Now, onto something that's always a hot topic, performance. Specifically, low latency performance. Our source mentions real-time patches and scheduler tweaks. Can you explain how Proxmox is squeezing out that extra responsiveness with its kernel? So latency, it's all about minimizing delays. In the world of virtualization, those tiny delays can really mess things up make your VMs feel sluggish, make your networking unreliable. Proxmox tackles this by incorporating these things called real-time kernel patches. They make the kernel more uh, preemptive. Like it can interrupt those less important tasks to prioritize the time-sensitive ones. You got it. They also tweak the scheduler, which is the part of the kernel that decides which tasks get to use the CPU and for how long. They fine-tune it to favor those operations where every millisecond counts. So for anyone running VMs that are really demanding, lots of input and output or need super fast response times, think VoIP servers, game servers, anything handling real-time data, these tweaks can make a real difference, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's like comparing a regular car to a race car. Both get you from point A to point B, but that race car, it's built for speed and responsiveness. Same idea here. Proxmox's kernel, it's tuned for those specific demands of virtualization where low latency is king. Last but not least, let's touch on security. The source we're looking at mentions things like a Parmer and Selenix hooks, plus kernel hardened patches. Why are these so important when you're running a virtualization platform? Security is a big deal, especially when you're talking about a platform that might be hosting all sorts of different workloads. A Parmer and Selenix, they're like extra layers of defense. Think of them as security guards for your system. Keeping an eye out for any suspicious activity. Exactly. They let you set very specific rules for what applications and processes are allowed to do. And the hooks in Proxmos's kernel give those security guards even more control within the virtualized environment. On top of that, you've got kernel hardening patches. They're like patching up any weak spots in the system, making it much tougher for attackers to exploit. So it's about taking a proactive stance, right? Safeguarding the whole virtual infrastructure from those nasty zero-day attacks and all that ransomware stuff we keep hearing about. Exactly. It's like having a security system for your house, but it's for your entire virtual environment. It makes the whole platform much more robust, much more secure. So all these modifications sound pretty awesome, but it begs the question, could you theoretically install Proxmox VE on a regular Debian setup and just use the standard Debian kernel. Technically, yeah, you could probably pull it off, especially for like really light use, a basic home lab. We're not pushing the system too hard. But you'd be missing out on a lot of the goodies we've been talking about. Big time. No ZFS out of the box. No ACS override for that seamless pass through. And 
Forget about the guaranteed compatibility with the latest hardware. You'd probably spend a lot of time manually patching things, compiling modules, or just accepting that your performance is going to be limited. So yeah, maybe not the best idea, unless you're really into tinkering and troubleshooting. It makes it clear that the Proxmox kernel isn't just some optional add-on. It's a core part of what makes Proxmox so powerful for virtualization. Definitely. It's baked right into the platform's DNA. It's a strategic advantage. Okay, final question then. If Debian is known for its stability, why doesn't Proxmox just use their kernel as the base and add their special virtualization tweaks on top of that? Seems simpler, right? It's a good question, and it comes down to the different goals of each project. Debian, their kernel development, they're all about long-term stability, playing it safe, taking a very conservative approach to new features and drivers, which is great for a general purpose server, like, if you need something to run rock solid for years, Debian's your go-to. But Proxmox is in a different arena, right? They're a virtualization platform going head-to-head -head with some big names. Exactly. They need to be on the cutting edge, yep. supporting the newest storage tech, the latest hardware, those advanced file systems like ZFS, high-performance networking, all of those crucial features like hardware pass-through. To stay competitive. To stay competitive. So they made the call to track Ubuntu's kernel. It's inherently more modern, more frequently updated than Debian's stable release. And then on top of that, they layer their own virtualization-specific enhancements. It's like our, our source calls it, innovation on top of evolution. They're taking that faster-paced Ubuntu kernel and making it even better for virtualization. So for all the power users out there, whether they're running a series home lab or managing those demanding enterprise workloads, Proxmox kernel is really designed with you in mind. It's all about providing a premium experience right out of the box. Features like ZFS, but without the headache of setting it up yourself. GPU pass-through that just works. Lower latency for those performance-hungry applications. Better uptime thanks to things like the watchdog timer. It's about giving you more and making you compromise less. And... Let's not forget the whole open source aspect. You're not locked into some closed system. You can actually dive into the kernel source code, tweak it, even recompile it yourself if you've got some super specific needs. That level of control and transparency is something you rarely find with proprietary platforms. It's a huge advantage. It really puts the power in your hands. So what we've learned today is that in the world of virtualization, those subtle differences in kernels, the choice of the underlying distribution, the specific patches and modules included, they can have a massive impact on performance, on features, on the whole user experience. Big time. And it really highlights Proxmox's approach. You know, they're not just throwing something together. They're thinking carefully about how to empower users, how to push the limits of performance, how to stay ahead of the curve. And that's reflected in their kernel. It's not just a technical detail. It's a core part of their philosophy. Absolutely. So to circle back to our original question, why not just use Debian's kernel? The answer, and it's a good one, is that sometimes the things that really make a difference are the details you don't see. The stuff happening behind the scenes. Exactly. And in Proxmox's case, those details are meticulously crafted and integrated right into their kernel. It makes you think, doesn't it? About how those small, carefully considered choices at the very core of a system can have such a big impact. What other areas of technology could benefit from that kind of focused, user-centric optimization? It's something to ponder. Definitely. Well, that about wraps up our deep dive for today. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure, as always.